and I mean, was sorry. I was born in two thousand and three, so the Secret Sessions was the 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 last release fruit in that time. So my father likes Irish music and Celtic music, and that that and I mean, where I live, I live in Galicia, so that's like a little traditional, like Irish mm -hmm. and Galish music are so similar. So my father used. Like he has, uh, he has, he listens to uh, to Celtic music normally, usually, sorry. <laughs> so um, that's why we discovered the secret sessions together, I think. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Set Lusting Bruce, your podcast all about Bruce Springsteen, his music, mostly his fans. I am your host, Jesse Jackson, and today we have another friendship episode where we have a couple of guests who have bonded over music, usually Bruce Springsteen's music, but not always. And so we have Laura and Ennis. How are you guys doing? Uh, I'm I'm doing fine, great, excited to be here. I am excited to have you too. And uh, so, well, why don't we start with you, Laura? Tell us a little about yourself. So you might remember me from another episode of Set Lessing Bruce. Uh, my name is Laura. I am 19, big fan. Uh, I've, for the past few months, I've been interacting with various fans and I've really enjoyed it and I am looking forward to this episode. Well, thank you, Laura. I do remember you being, I thought I loved talking to you. We had such a fun time. Um, and I feel very w happy because um, you were nervous about joining me. You ended up having such a good time that you convinced your friend to join me. So <laughs> I feel very, uh, I feel very warm and like, okay, I've done a good job. So thank you. That's a very lovely compliment. So Inez, Inez, please tell us a little about yourself and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Inez and I'm calling from Spain and I'm 17 years old and I'm so happy to be here. I mean, that's what you said. Laura told me about you and she told me that she had passed a very good time with you. So I wanted to try and I saw your account before and I really like what you do. So I'm so happy to be here. That is very sweet of you to say, I appreciate it. Um, so, and I will tell you right now, your English is better than my Spanish. So I think you're gonna do great. All right, thank you. So I know how Laura found Bruce, but I don't know you. And as we're talking, we can see a Born in the USA poster behind you. My yeah. audience can't, but I can. Talk to me, how did you find Bruce and what about him spoke to you? Well, I think mine is a very typical story because my father is a Bruce fan too. So when I was like three or four years old, as, as long as I remember, uh, we used to drive to his hometown in his car and he used to, Put Bruce music there, and I remember when I I was that age, so I, I fell in love with the Secret Sessions record, and we used to sing it, and I have very good memories with that record. So yes, it's it's a typical story of a father who shows music to to his daughter in this case. And well, yes, it is a typical story a father passing on music, but what is a little unusual is you don't usually hear the Seeger Sessions as the first album that Bruce, a music that someone loves. So that just warms my heart. That's great. Yeah. And I mean, was, sorry, I was born in 2003. So the Seeger Sessions was the, the, the last release Bruce in that time. So my father, likes Irish music and Celtic music and that, that and I mean, where I live, I live in Galicia. So that's like 
a little traditional, like Irish mm -hmm. and Galician music are so similar. So my father used, like he has, uh, he has, he listens to uh, to Celtic music normally, usually, sorry. <laughs> so um, that's why we discovered the secret sessions together, I think. Oh, nice. Then, oh, oh. Did, does he like Wrecking Ball too? Because there's a little bit of Celtic touch. No, my dad, like, he's a fan, but he discovered Bruce when he was younger, like when he was 25, 30, more or less. Yeah. So he stopped listening to Bruce. Like, he, he doesn't like the, the last record. Okay, he's a classic guy. Yeah. He doesn't like Letter to You or Western Stars or any of that. I think he, he likes Letter to You because I showed him on October, like it's it's cool because uh he showed me Bruce for the first time and now I'm like I know Bruce more than him <laughs> <laughs> so I can show you more songs than like songs that he didn't know for example for the 80s he doesn't know every song for the, the river for example and and lately I've been showing him so yes in in the new music of course so yes he likes Letter to You for example he doesn't like Western Stars but he I think he, he liked it too. Uh, so I can't remember, Laura, when we talked, had Western, had Letter to You come out? Uh, it did, but I don't really think we talked about it. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? I mean, I liked it a lot. It seemed more personal and it seemed sort of like a, kind of reminded, this might sound weird, but it was like, kind of reminded me of like, folklore by Taylor Swift in the sense that like they're taking a breather and like exploring and like making it personal and like just a time to catch up with themselves if that makes sense it so, does um I I my I think my favorite song was Rainmaker and I've heard that from a couple of people yeah I mean I I liked it okay so uh, Inez, what I was thinking of, right, is that um, the old phrase, the student has become the master, right, where you have, your dad taught you, and now you're teaching him, and yes. I, I love that story. I, I think that's amazing. Yes, it's fine for me. Right? Yeah, so how did you two become friends? Uh, do you want to speak, or do you want me to speak? Do we? So... Okay, so I created a Twitter account like my sophomore year of high school and then I like sort of like abandoned it and then I like revived it again like more like summer and then September I was like oh I need to find people so I can like maybe like be connected with more Bruce fans so I looked down my recommendation and if people had like Bruce in their name I'd just be like, follow, 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 follow. And I, one of the accounts, I guess, was, was her account. And I was like, I didn't really think much of it. And then I like get this DM that's like, oh, this is, yeah, you're smiling because you know what's coming next. Uh, you were like, I've never met a fan your age before. And part of me was like, not to sound mean, but I was, you know what I'm about to say. I was like weirded out a bit because I was like, I thought you were like maybe like an, like a creep. And then, so like we talked a bit and then I like ignored you for a week. And then, something, so <laughs> and then like something, but then like, and, but then like, so like a week after I ignored you, I was like, Hmm, maybe I should give this person a shot. So then I'm like, so then I just started the conversation up again. And then the rest of the three. Go. No, oh, I remember that I post a picture. Like I, I was talking to a friend on a tweet and I post a picture with a um, caption that was in Spanish. So she asked me, wait, are you fluent in Spanish? And I remember that I think that was how we started the conversation again. So I, I have to share a story that um, 
I had a few years ago, there's a wonderful fan named Madison who um, wanted, she, she wanted Bruce and Patty to come to her prom, right? That was her wish. She wanted Bruce and Patty to basically be her dates to the prom. And uh, she got to go see him in live and she was, and so she was talking a lot about it on Twitter. And so I reached out to her and I said, hey, do you want to be on the show? And she said, yeah. And um, I didn't put, I didn't do the math in my head. Um, and so she was talking about that she was in her bedroom when we were recording and I realized she was 16 and my wife and son, like, what, why are you talking to this 16 year old girl? Are you this creep? Like, no, no, it's all about Bruce. It's all about Bruce. So Laura, I'm right there with you, right? That you, uh, you know, you have to be safe on the internet. So I can imagine you're like, okay, who's this person coming at me? That's too funny. Yeah, but it, I'm I'm glad that some whatever told me to like start the conversation back up again did because we we talk a lot. Yeah, that's that's so lovely, um, you know, and that's the whole theme of this month. Uh, episodes are people that have been bonded through friendship through music, and you know, to find you guys are similar ages, uh, very different backgrounds, but with this mutual love of music, that's just really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit more, like once you guys started talking, uh, tell me a little bit more about your friendship. Well, the, the first time I DM'd her, I felt like I was writing an essay for my English class because my English was even worse than it is now. I mean, I, I've learned a lot with her, talking to her. So so I, I really felt like I was doing homework and I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how Americans could talk on social media. I mean, I, I didn't know anything. I, I thought, I, I'm a shy person, kind of. So I thought that she's gonna, that, that I was gonna bother her in some way. And, and that, it took me like a week, maybe 10 days, more or less to talk to her to decide to talk to her and and i'm so happy too because uh she's a great friend go ahead laura it's so like what i said was like like i started the conversation by saying so are you fluent in spanish which i guess it might be an obvious because you're from spain but uh but it's it's cool so we like chat like every day and we have inside jokes. We talk about Bruce. We follow each other on Spotify. She helps me with my Spanish. Mm. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, it's. I. I think I got an A on my Spanish test thanks to her. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and so getting A's in English because of me and. It's being because I'm like fully remote this semester and it's really refreshing to get that interaction yes. because even during a pandemic you kind of lose touch with people who you like thought who thought who you thought were your friends and then it it just it's refreshing you know I think connection is one of the things we're all missing during this pandemic you know just seeing your friends um you know, sharing beverages, um, you know, hugging each other and laughing and telling jokes and going to the movies or going to shows together. And so I think it's kind of neat that you two have been, because of Bruce's music, kind of find this bonding together and you find, you know, a wonderful friend. And in the past, it would have been pen, pen pals, right? Like you would write each other letters and mail back and forth. And now then, because of the internet, you actually get to talk on a fairly regular basis, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So um, you're both pretty young, but uh, have you guys talked about after this pandemic, somehow finding a way to meet in person? A little. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we haven't made like 
plans plans but right. i said it like hey if you want to come you can come and then i'm her her mom who likes me a lot yes like if you come to spain we'll let you stay in the guest room yeah and we're already planning outfits for Bruce Springsteen concerts. Yes, that is awesome. That is great. So, um, so, um, I as, talk about you mentioned. It, it sounds like you're a pretty heavy Bruce fan. What are your favorite albums or songs? Um, I can choose one album or one song. I have like a. I mean, that's typical. I have a, like a ranking, like a top. Okay. If I had to choose, I think Darkness, maybe. I think it's a great album. And it has, I, I don't know how to say this in English. Wait, <laughs> like, I love the words and the music. Like, for example, for me, Born and Run is like, I, I focus more on the music, even though the words are great, and the lyrics. And then the river, I focus more on the, on the lyrics and less on the music. So I think Darkness is in the middle. So if I have to choose one album, it will be Darkness for that reason, I think. And then I think Backstreet is one of, if I had to choose one song, it will be Backstreet because I, I love uh, Roy Beaton's work. Like I, I love how he, the way he plays piano and he inspire, inspire, how can I say that? Inspires me, is it correct? inspires me a lot you know this has got to be a really beautiful thing for you to um to find someone close to your own age that have this same passion talk to me a little bit about that well i talked to her because my friends who are my age obviously aren't interested in bruce and i've like they of course, they like him. I mean, if I show you them a song, they will like him because it's Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> but uh, I, I wanted to talk to someone who likes Bruce without my help, you know? Sure. Okay. So, yes, it's so it's fine. It's, it's so cool because we have different opinions and we can share it. And, and maybe, like, I can show a song to my friend, to, to a friend of mine who doesn't like Bruce. And, and they will say, all right, this is so cool. But they can compare because they don't know how to search and how to investigate on his music. So it's, yeah, I, I mean, finding someone my age who likes Bruce is one of the best things that happened to me this year, I think. <laughs> I, I could tell that's a great, Laura, thoughts? Uh, I agree. And it's like, I feel like we connect a lot and it's, and it's expanded beyond Bruce. And it's just the pandemic and the move has made stuff. It's just, it's made stuff harder, but this has made it like something to look forward to. How do you guys work the time difference? It's seven hours. So I'm in central. Um, basically, um, I, it's pretty, it's actually pretty easy in my opinion. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. It's like midday when I get up for her. Okay. And it's and mainly like, I don't expect, it, the rule is I don't expect her to respond at night for most, my night for the most part. And she doesn't res expect me to respond during her morning. Okay. So actually, I have a funny story. So Please. Like, um, I, I'm not sure if you know what I'm talking about. It's about the time zone. So one of our inside jokes it's called negative three oh. and it's um and it was like i was like i have like it was like 11 p.m and i was like i have an update on negative three but oh. i'm not gonna tell you i'm gonna go to bed now and then i decided to like I knew that would like leave her in suspense when she woke up and so she'd have to wake wait like seven hours for me to wake up and say something <laughs> and then she was spamming me then and she was like tell me what happened with negative three tell me I'm curious 
<laughs> and I was like, and then I posted a meme like before I went to bed that was like, how I'll sleep knowing that you'll be in agony for the next seven hours. And then it was just like me like, <laughs> So I, I took advantage of the time difference with that. But I have noticed that she goes to bed later than me. Like I go to bed between 11 and 12 and she goes to bed between like 12 and 1. Okay. So it's it's actually fairly easy, but okay. yeah. Uh, and it's, are you virtual? Is your school virtual as well? No, no, I go to school every day. I okay, so how is COVID doing over there? Um, it's like you mean school or in general? Just both. Well, I mean, it's I I, I got I get more tired going to school and, and like obviously we have to wear a mask and wash our hands like every fifty minutes every class we have to wash our hands and teachers are tired too because they can uh, it's it's more difficult for them to to teach uh -huh. us with a mask on. And but I mean, I prefer have go to school than online classes because, uh, uh, I mean, it's more difficult for me to focus on online classes. And then if with, with the in, in general, I, I think we, we're better than you. I think like yes, less dead. Mm -hmm. But yes, I'm worried, and I uh, fear. That's everyone, I think, too. Yes, mm. absolutely. Mm. Um, so I just had yesterday, I had a couple of buddies on, and they started talking about one of their debates was, is Wrecking Ball an E Street record? And one of them, two of them said, absolutely, it's, it's, it's Bruce Springsteen, the E Street Band. And the other one said, no, it's a solo record that he just happens to have members of the band on. So, and that's an ongoing debate they have, just a, you know, a good natured discussion. So do you two have anything that you guys don't agree on, but you guys uh, pick at each other about? Maybe the Western Stars. I like Western Stars a lot, a lot more. And I also, I tease her for her bio. It's no like Springsteen fan. Oh, right. And then um, you're like, I want a James on. I'm like, no, don't. I love it. No, I, I just like, I, I want to take it off because my mom <laughs> found my Twitter account like maybe how many times ago? Mm, one month, three weeks, maybe. So she she put on her bio mom of a Springsteen fan and it's so funny to Laura and he always he, and she always messes up with me about that. That's funny. It's good. Her English teacher thinks I bully her. Yes, she does. <laughs> Tell because, me that story. Why? <laughs> because my English teacher is a, I don't know how to explain it. He's a very special person. Okay. So I told him that I have an American friend and, and Laura wants to talk to him. Like he, she, she wants to be friends with him, which I find so cool. But sometimes like, uh, may, maybe it's because Laura likes to roast him because sometimes she helps me with homework and she always says like he wrote this badly he this is wrong like he's he's wrong in what he's saying so <laughs> my, my teacher kind of not not hate her but maybe he doesn't like her <laughs> so she always he always tell me like she 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 doesn't want you like she, she don't, doesn't want to be friends with you she's just bullying you <laughs> <laughs> and, and because i gave like uh, grief about the bio, but I think the bio is cute. Very nice. That's good. We named a, I know. Oh, and another inside joke. We named a lizard. So there was a lizard oh. that was running around in my living room on January fifteenth because we gave we gave the lizard a birthday because it was January fifteenth when we found the lizard. Okay. We a picture of it, 
and then she was like adopt him and i was like we should name him pedro jr (laughs) so that so we talk about so we have a a lizard that like it's so like every time we see a brown lizard which hasn't been much sadly we're like pedro jr yeah it's and then Pedro. Pedro thinks I'm, and then Pedro, the English teacher, thinks I'm mean. Yeah. You're naming a wizard after him. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Um, what else? Tell me, what else do you want to share? Mm. What can we share? I don't know. Okay. Uh, we write songs together. Oh, that's oh, yeah. nice. I forgot it. Yes. Yeah. Like she she writes the lyrics and I'm trying to work on the music. That's nice. Yeah, but okay. I don't have a lot of time because I, I, like school has been hard this year. Yeah. I'm at the last year of high school and people say it's the hardest year of of high school. Here in school. Yeah. So I have a lot of exams and assignments and all that stuff. But yeah, I, I like writing songs with her. What do you want to do once you graduate? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, that's perfectly acceptable. That's where yeah. you should be at this age. You'll you'll figure it out. Well, so. thank you. That stressed me out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sure. Laura, how is your school going? Uh, I mean, academically, it's going well. I have to pick a major by next semester, and I don't really know what I'm going to do about that. Well... Like, uh, go ahead. Nothing seems to like be. I don't seem to be passionate enough about anything. Like, I don't know. I like school. Like, it's kind of annoying because I'm the only one. Like, there are some classes where I'm legit the only person who like engages with the professor and has the camera on for Zoom classes. But I still feel like I don't know what I want to do. Well, I'm 61 and I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. So you, that's okay. That's okay with both of you. That's good. Um, all right. Um, I asked Laura this last time, but now it's your turn. Um, the Mary question. Okay. So, okay. Um, Jay yeah. Armstrong is an honors English teacher in the Philadelphia area. And he, every year, has his seniors study Thunder Road. They look at all the lyrics, they look at the imagery, they look at the themes, and then he asks the question, does Mary get in the car at the end of the song? So, Ennis, that's your question. Mm, Well, I used to think that she does, but uh, I've changed my mind. I mean, a few times ago, I don't remember exactly how many times. Laura said that it could be uh, the a, Mer- a dream of Mary, you know? Right. Figment of her imagination. Yes. Yeah. So I thought about that, and I think it could be a, a dream of Bruce. Okay. Like, because maybe he had, I, I mean, as a musician, you know? I, I don't know him, of course, but... Uh, maybe he had like a, a young musician thinks that you don't know where you're gonna be tomorrow. You know? So maybe he had that frustration that, for example, you want to do something and you're convinced that you want to be something, but then you go to a pub and you see a guy who's a better guitar player than you and you get sad about it. So um, you dream of it. and he like I, I thought that maybe he was dreaming with freedom and to like what's the song about you know like running away from all those those thoughts that, that are bad for 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 you for oneself and i think that mary's gonna get into the car but then he wakes up so he doesn't know because he just woke up. Like maybe yes, maybe no, who knows? I like that answer. That's a good answer. That's good. Very nice. Um, any final thoughts, guys? Final. Let's start with you. Um, 
Me? Yeah. Oh, me. Yeah. Uh, I like this podcast. I'm glad that we got to be on it together. And I like talking about Bruce with you. And Eris Moy Guapa. <laughs> All right, and can you top that? Um, what? Can you repeat, please? Sure. Any final thoughts? All right. Um, I was so nervous before, and I had a really great time with you, and <laughs> and I, I mean, I thought I was gonna understand less words than I than I did, and it was so so fun. And tú también eres muy guapa. Well, I appreciate both of you joining me. Uh, you guys are both just amazing young women. And I'm so glad that y'all found a friendship through Bruce's music and through the internet. Uh, please, both of you, uh, you, you and your family stay safe during this crazy time. And I'm pulling for you two to be able to meet in person and exchange hugs and play music together, right? So that sounds great. And to be at a show where you guys will be ready to cheer on Bruce. So that sounds great. Um, hang tight. Listeners, you, please, thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed Friendship Month. If you have a story about friendship, reach out to me at setlustingbruce at gmail.com. Uh, for now, remember to social distance wash your hands, wear a mask, and let's all be good to each other because that's the only way we're going to get through this. For now, thank you and goodbye. Doing a podcast at times can be a one-way conversation, and I hate that. So please let me know what you like and don't like about the work I'm doing. You can reach the podcast via email at setlustingbruce at gmail.com. The show is on Twitter, at SetLustingBruce, and my personal Twitter is at DFW. We have a website, www.SetLustingBruce.com. From there, you can find links to other Springsteen podcasts, as well as other music-themed podcasts. We have a page devoted to our own SLB All-Star Band. These are guests who have been on the podcast more than three times. There is a link to our store where you can purchase Set Lessing Brew shirts, as well as a Mary Question t-shirt. There is a link to our Patreon page where you can sign up to help support the podcast financially. We have different levels and different rewards based on your support. If you don't have any extra cash, and right now who does, you can support the podcast by subscribing via your favorite podcast player and leaving us a review. The more reviews we have, the easier it is for people to find us. And please tell a friend about the podcast, especially if they love Bruce or music, because it will make a difference. You just heard the fun talking, hard rocking, music loving, album ranking, fan thinking, joy spreading, lyric reading, story sharing podcast that is the one, the only. Set Listing Bruce. Set Listing Bruce is part of the Southgate Media Podcast Group. The theme for Set Listing Bruce was written by David Rosen, used by permission.